a feud that has been raging in the Netherlands for over a decade. A feud that keeps reaching new, shocking, all-time lows, and where the boundaries are pushed further every time. The start of it all is clear. A missing shipment of 200 kilos in a port in Antwerp in 2012. The shipment is taken, but by whom? Was it seized by customs? Did it still end up on the market? Or was it taken by the turtles? There are many stories floating around, but where is the truth in it all? The only thing that is clear is that the beef is not fought behind closed doors anymore. Not even the public is safe. At this point, it could be anyone's last day. Innocent civilians have been at the end of young and reckless teens who carry out kamikaze actions, having absolutely no clue what they're doing. Nobody is safe. This is the documentary about the Mokro feud. Each and every player will be discussed, and every event will be explained in detail based on the best sources available. Leaked PGB messages and from the mouths of those involved. It all started in 2012, in the underworld of Amsterdam. Men of mainly Moroccan and Antillian descent formed a group together and were involved in the smuggling of narcotics. Together with other groups, they had invested in a shipment of 200 kilos of coke, worth multiple millions. That was supposed to reach the port of Antwerp. Gwyneth Martha, a Dutch criminal from Antillian descent, led the deal. Hussein Ait S and Ben Aouf A, were Dutch criminals from Moroccan descent that were also involved in the shipment. Pay attention to those three names. It was supposed to be a routine job, which usually goes as follows. Their contact in South America sends their goods to the port of Antwerp, often hidden within a shipment of fruit. The group has several dock workers on a payroll in the port of Antwerp, who manipulate whether a container gets scanned or not. These dock workers make sure the container is not scanned and goes through any sort of further inspection without a problem. Customs in the port of Antwerp only scan and inspect one in 42 containers that enter the port. That is just a bit more than 2% of all containers. Once the container is stored, a dock worker shares the location with the group. The group then sends their guys to take out the coke of the containers. The stuff is then safely brought home and everyone involved gets their cut. Mission succeeded, and on to the next one. Relatively simple and straightforward, right? Unfortunately, it did not go as smooth as it was supposed to. Not at all. The shipment arrives according to plan, but goes missing. It is unclear where the shipment is. Its location in the port is unknown, and the first guys that were supposed to take out the coke can't find the container. As it is always important to get the goods out as fast as possible, the longer the shipment goes missing, the higher the risk became for something to happen. They had to secure the shipment as soon as possible. That's where the Turtles come in. The Turtles are a gang from Burgerhout in Antwerp, who know every meter in the entire port of Antwerp by heart. They are experienced in emptying containers, are known to do their work professionally, and have a high success rate. They were called to the rescue at the last moment. However, unfortunately, for all those invested in the shipment, they came up empty-handed. Even this experienced gang could not find the shipment. But was this really the case? Were they not able to find it? Or did the turtles take the fee for emptying the containers without even trying to find it? Or a third scenario, did they take the coke themselves and told their clients the mission failed? There was already a lot of confusion, so they could have easily capitalized on what seemed to be a golden opportunity. All these questions and nobody knew what exactly had happened. People started talking, and word on the street was that all of a sudden, members of the Turtles clan were splashing money. They suddenly drove new Porsches and spent like crazy in the clubs of Antwerp. The situation was so unclear that at this point, anything sounded believable. Another story surfaces that Customs seized the shipment and kept it secret, knowing that it would create unrest in the underworld. The customs officer apparently did so in consultation with the police, hoping those criminals involved would clean each other up. It might seem a bit far-fetched. Would the police really plan this, knowing it would cause very dangerous situations? I don't know about this, but if the police wanted to create turmoil, well, they definitely succeeded. 
As days go by, frustration grows and trouble starts brewing among Gwyneth Martha, Hussein 8S and Ben Aouf A. They all wanted to know what exactly had happened. I do need to inform you about a crucial detail about these three men. Hussein and Gwyneth were friends and business partners back in the day. Hussein was among the top-ranked men in the organization that was led by Gwyneth, but their friendship once changed when Gwyneth went to jail in 2007 and assigned Najeb Bubu as the man in charge instead of Hussein. This made Hussein furious. He left the group of Gwyneth to team with his brother-in-law, Ben Aouf A. From then on, they were not friends anymore. Solely occasional business partners whenever it was necessary. Let's go back to the missing shipment. The rumors kept spreading. Those who knew would not tell because it could only cause problems for themselves. The uncertainty created so much friction that the three men, once business partners, working together successfully, are becoming rivals. The groups become each other's enemies. Group Gwinnett versus Group Hussein and Ben Aouf. Both groups accuse each other of foul play, creating more frustration and tension, instead of peacefully hashing it out with each other. The decade-long nightmare is just about to start. Group Gwinnett takes the initiative to reconcile the feud and wants to meet up. The two groups decide to do so in the Crown Plaza Hotel in Antwerp on the 18th of October, 2012. Gwinnett sends one of his most trusted men to deal with the situation for him. This man was Najeb Bubu, a longtime friend of Gwinnett and number two in rank of the group. Najeb was accompanied by Chris Bauman. Chris Bauman belonged to group Gwinnett as well, but was a troubled guy and not the best criminal. He was easily influenced and that day he had different intentions than Najeb. Chris was not there to reconcile the feud. He was the person who set Najeb up. Najeb stayed in the Crown Plaza Hotel and came down to the front of the hotel for the supposed meetup with Chris and others. As soon as he is outside, he is struck multiple times by two men. Two men managed to flee in their white Volkswagen Golf, which is later found. Chris managed to run away and fled the scene, only to be later found hiding in the bushes by police. Police officers initially treated Chris as a witness However, that changed after they found a phone in the bushes with his fingerprints. After some investigation, they suspected Chris of foul play. The phone with the fingerprints on it was a phone that was revealed to be in contact with suspects who struck Najeb. But that was not all. Text messages revealed that Chris indeed set up Najeb, but also shared his whereabouts with none other than Ben Aouf. Chris betrayed his own group and set up Najeb for Ben Aouf. The two who did the job were Rida Benajem and Machano P, which were hired and instructed by Ben Aouf. More on them later. Gwinnett is absolutely furious at the loss of one of his best men. This was not supposed to be the outcome of the meetup. He wanted to reconcile, and group Ben Aouf and Hussein did this? One thing was for sure. This was the start of something that would go on for a very long time and have major impact on particularly Amsterdam. At this point, everything was allowed, as the talking stage was now officially closed for good. Group Gwinnett planned to strike back viciously. What was supposed to be a carefully carried out mission ended up in a total disaster. The event that took place on the 29th of December 2012 was absolutely unheard of in the Netherlands and would totally change the country's perspective on organized crime. Around 10.30 in the evening, there are four men sitting in a Range Rover with French license plates in the Stadtje Lamberta in Amsterdam, expecting to have an appointment with somebody. The four men are Said El Yazidi, Youssef Lekorf, Ben Aouf A, and Rida Ben Ajem, who were still on the run from the Crown Plaza crime. All of a sudden, a silver Audi RS4 comes racing towards them, and multiple men aim at the Range Rover and unleash their AKs. The Range Rover is hit more than 50 times. 21-year-old Said El Yazidi and 28-year-old Yusuf Lekorf tried to flee but are struck fatally. Ben Aouf and Rida succeed to flee. The main target of this attack was Ben Aouf and he manages to jump in the water between two houseboats. The guys carrying out the job are Adil A, Anwar B and Hamza B. They proceed to chase after Ben Aouf but they can't find him anymore. 
Ben Elf was minutes later helped by a woman who saw him swimming near her houseboat. She thought he accidentally fell in the water and offered him a towel and a cup of tea. Ben Elf kindly refused and disappeared. Adil A, Anwar B and Hamza B stopped searching for Ben Elf as they realized that they would not find him anymore. They get in their car and proceed to leave the scene at high speeds. Two police officers on motorbikes were close to the scene and immediately chased the silver Audi RS4. Two of the men in the Audi opened fire, causing two police officers to stop their chase and hide behind the motorbikes, fearing for their life. This moment shocked the entire nation and was unlike anything that had ever happened. It also solidified the Mokro feud as extremely dangerous and far from over. It exposed a new generation of criminals that were reckless and impulsive. Adil, Anwar and Hamza managed to flee the scene successfully. But what was not a success is the hit they had to take care of. Mission failed. Ben Elf came out unscathed and was now ready to plan his revenge. Ultimately, after investigation, police arrested Adil A and Anwar B and they are now serving life sentences in the Netherlands. Hamza B is serving a 20-year jail sentence in Morocco. Both groups have now retaliated, but this is just the start of it all. Compared to what is about to come, it is going to be much more reckless, relentless, and honestly unbelievable. Everyone involved is now on high alert, and remember Chris Bauman, the traitor who betrayed Gwinnett and Ajeb? His life will take a very unexpected sudden turn. The next episode will be full of spectacular getbacks and show that nothing is forgotten and absolutely no one is safe. <laughs>